Hi, I'm here today to talk to you about the Image API. Um, so for this session, we're going to look at the learning objectives of the Image API. So um, by the end of the session, hopefully you'll understand what the Image API provides, be able to change an Image API URL to access different parts of an image, and understand the different types of Image API implementations, so level zero, level one, etc. Uh, and you'll also know about the tools uh, that work with the Image API, so you can test your Image API server. Uh, we're going through this workbox uh, and it starts off with uh, a number of uh, stuff about the theory of the image API uh, before going on to some uh, practical examples and practical tasks. So we're going to start with what is the image API um, it's the foundation of all the IIIF APIs they're all built on top of the uh, image API and luckily it's one of the easiest to implement uh, because there are lots of servers that are available uh, for you to install uh, to be able to use the image API. And for the British Library, there is a particular image server which you use, which I will um, talk about later. Uh, quickly to go on some terminology, I'm not going to go through all of them, you can see them here, but um, API is, uh, stands for the Application Program Interface. And in this case, it's agreed standing between the Image API server and the Image API client. And when I talk about client, uh, I mean the viewer um, that's able to um, process the image and be able to show it on a web browser. Um, so examples include OpenSea Dragon, Mirador, and the Universal Viewer. Uh, I also uh, call clients viewers, so just to, to warn you there. Um, the server is the thing that runs on the, um, the remote machine, the image server. Uh, and this is the thing that uh, produces the images and sends them to the user. Uh, the image API is the combination of the server and um, the IIIF uh, image API. And it's an agreement between the contract, the viewer, and the server. Uh, and then we have the image API server, which is the software that runs the server. When I talk about a IIIF image, this is an image uh, which is made available through a IIIF image API server, and we'll cover that more later. So if we start about the history of um, IIIF, um, so really IIIF came out of the medieval manuscripts uh, arena, uh, and there was real kind of difficulty in using uh, the digitized images that we were making available at that time. Um, there's a really good blog there from Ben Alberton from Stanford University talking about the kind of benefits that IIIF brought um, to research. And from a more personal perspective, um, when I worked at the National Library of Wales, I'll talk about um, how we used to make images available. Um, so we'd start off with um, a thumbnail. Um, so when we digitize something, we'd make a certain uh, set of images available, a thumbnail um, and then a web or reference sized image. Uh, and then we'd have a high quality archival TIFF and um, that was ever, only available on request. Uh, usually we'd only offer it to researchers and um, potentially at a cost or um, make it available uh, for part of their research. And then you'd probably recognize these type of viewers. Um, this one was called a METS viewer, um, which would allow you to navigate between different images. You had a table of contents on one side. Uh, and then if you click the, um, the kind of magnifying glass, you could either change from the zoom from the thumbnail to the, um, the web reference copy. Uh, but as times went past, um, screens got bigger um, and we're getting so many different requests from researchers because the web version just wasn't high enough quality to be able to, uh, to understand the text and do the analysis that they wanted to do. And so many institutions moved to a kind of more zooming type of interface. Um, and back then there was um, tools like Zoomify and Microsoft DZI, uh, which allowed you to zoom into these images, but they were um, using flash. Um, so they weren't supported on mobile and they required you to convert your images into proprietary formats like Zoomify or DZI. And around this time, the JPEG 2000 file format started to gain traction as an open file format that could support zoomable viewers. And then IIIF came in and the thing it really provides, um, especially the image API, um, is a standard URL structure for accessing images uh, and it makes it easy to support. Um, it has just enough information to drive a Zoom viewer and also it's the sort of hackable URLs um, so you can fiddle around with the URLs and get the images that you want at the size that you want. And because the images are um, cacheable and scalable, um, because the URL is predictable, it makes it easy to cache and makes it fast to work with. And we can see a full example of a um, IIIF image API here. Um, so I've split it here into identifier, region, size, rotation, quality, and format. And we'll go through those um, different uh, sections in a second. Um, but you can see here that we've got um, the full image API. And if we open up this in a new link, 
uh, Elasticus to download it. And if we open it up, um, you should see there's a, that image as well. Um, you were able to download it. So if we first look at the identifier, so the event identifier part of the image is everything um, highlighted here. So everything to the right of this image is controlled by the IIIF standard. So after this um, kind of final slash, we've got the region size rotation quality format, and that's all defined in the IIIF image API. The identifier part is everything before that. Um, so this all depends on kind of how you set up your server, what the identifier is going to be. Um, this example from the British Library, the identifier is all the way up to this uh, slash here. So you can see that you've got an ARC identifier, and then you've got um, a URL API BL.UK as the kind of the server which provides the image. And then you've got image to play uh, path and the ARC identifier. Um, but if you change this identifier to, for example, to um, Harvard example, uh, you can see they've got a different uh, domain name, different path to their images, and they don't use ARC identifiers. Um, so everything to the left of this slash is part of the uh, identifier and is outside of IIIF, but it just must be unique to that image. Um, and here's an example from the Wellcome Trust, and they uh, happen to use the JPEG 2000 file name in there. Um, but it's really up to you what you put in the identifier. And then this is another example from uh, the Smithsonian, um, and you can see that they've got a different identifying scheme. Um, but as I say, everything for this URL is unique to the image uh, and doesn't need to be um, kind of standard in any way. Um, it should be noted that um, all of these examples use HTTPS, uh, and we found more and more you'll come across this issue that if you try and um, expose your IIIF assets as HTTP, um, it won't work in many of the viewers which are using HTTPS. Um, so that's something to watch out for. I mean, the British Library one is, is available as HTTPS, so you shouldn't see a problem. But um, if you're testing with HTTP, uh, you might get come across some issues. So the next part, portion of the URL is where we start going into the IIIF image API. Um, and this is where we get into the region. Um, so the format of the region is X comma Y comma width comma height, uh, with the origin uh, being the top left of the image. So you can see in this example, um, this is 125 pixels from the left, 15 pixels from the top, and 120 pixels wide by 140 pixels high. And this would be expressed as a IIIF region in this method. So 125 uh, is the um, distance from the left, 15 from the top. It's a box which is 120 wide and 140 high. Um, so these pixel dimensions are almost impossible to work out by hand. And um, so there are some tools uh, like Jack Reed's cropping tool and the UCD image cropping tool, uh, which will allow you to draw a box on the image. Um, and then it will, um, allow you to um, pick out those coordinates so you don't need to do it by hand. And we'll go further into that later. Um, so there are some also some kind of shortcuts. And um, the first one is full, which as you might imagine is the full region of the image. So that's the full image. Um, so you haven't taken any part of the image, it's the full sized image. Another special one is square. Uh, and this can be useful for thumbnails. Um, and it just turns any image um, into a square image. Um, which sometimes uh, you want a square um, square region of a of a uh, image. Um, we can see some examples here. So we've got the region here, which is full, and you can see we've got the full sized image. Uh, we've got the square, which I mentioned, which is quite useful for thumbnails, uh, and you can see that uh, both the um, the width and the height is the same. Um, the kind of content of this and the location of the square is is really server dependent, um, so you don't have any kind of um, control over this as a client. Um, but you know if you ask for the square, um, you're hoping the server is going to kind of do a good job of um, producing them, returning the most interesting part of the images. Um, but this, as I say, is, is mostly used for thumbnails. Um, we can also specify a region. So you can see this example here uh, is picking out the rosary. Uh, and this is um, 1095 pixels from the left, 1697 pixels from the top. And then the box is 442 pixels by 656 pixels, and we picked out this. Um, and the great thing about the IIIF URL is that we can copy this um, link here and open it in a new tab. Um, and this particular example will ask you to download, um, but you might be able to link that uh, in an image tag. 
Uh, if we have a look at one of the other ones, um, so this one here, if we look at this region here. Um, so if we copy this image URL, uh, you can see we've got a full working uh, image there. Um, so we put that into a blog post or link it to anything. Um, the British Library uh, Image Server, when you uh, click on this link, it, it asks you to download it. Uh, and that's just a way that the, uh, the web server is configured. So we looked at the region and the next thing is the size. Um, so as you might imagine, this is the size of the image. Uh, so there are lots of different ways of kind of specifying the size. Uh, we have the full size, um, but note this has been renamed to max in um, the new version of the IIIF image API. Uh, we can just specify the width or the height, or we can specify the width and the height, um, but note this will just sort the image. Or we can use this exclamation mark to say, give me the image uh, that fits inside this box. Um, so if you look at this example, it says um, we want to request 500 pixels wide. Um, this one's 250 pixels wide, and you can see it shrunk. Uh, we can ask for it um, 250 pixels high. So this is 250 pixels high, and the image server has worked out the corresponding width for that. Um, so we don't need to supply it. We can ask for the full size image. We can ask for the maximum size image. Now, the difference between full and max is um, the full image uh, is kind of the maximum image uh, that's possible to get from this uh, image whereas the maximum is the maximum you're allowed to do. Um, now, I've had a look at your image servers and you um, restrict the maximum size you can download to about 2000 pixels on either width or height. Um, so in this case, um, the full um, should return kind of a 401 to say that it's not allowed to access at full size, um, but you're only allowed to access it in max. Um, but as this is currently using um, IIIF version um, 2 of the image API, uh, that's not absolutely required. So at the moment, the max and the full uh, are the same size, but the full is not the actual full size image. It's been limited to 2000. Um, so as well as the, so the max is the one that you should use from now on, because you know that's always going to resolve and that's going to uh, be compatible with 3. And also you're going to be able to get the uh, image at the maximum allowable size uh, rather than the full size. Uh, we can constrain it to a box at 250 by 250 pixels. And you can see because this is a rectangular image, uh, it's been distorted to be able to fix and fit in that box. Um, so if we wanted to have the smallest image that would fit inside that box, we can use this explanation mark. Uh, and that won't distort the image, but it will still fit inside the 250 by 250. Uh, again, this is really useful for web development. If you want it to fit into a particular portion of the page, um, then you can do it like this. The next part of the URL is the rotation. Um, so this is how you can rotate the image by certain degrees. Um, <clears throat> not all image servers um, support all different types of rotation. Uh, and this is what's known as compliance level. So uh, the more functions the image server um, supports, the higher the compliance level. And I'm pleased to say that the, the British Library image server um, supports uh, almost all of the features. And so it's called a level two image server, the most compliant image server. Um, but if you don't support um, rotation at all, then that would be a level zero. If you only support 90 degrees, then that's a level one. Um, if you can support it by any amount, um, then that's a level two. And the same, you can also mirror the image. Um, so using this British Library image, you can see that we can rotate it by 45 degrees and so not just the 90 degrees. Um, we can support it by anything up to 365 degrees. Uh, we can also do mirroring. So what this has done is um, on this example, the person's looking uh, that way. Um, but if we swap it to mirroring, it's going to flip the image. Um, so the person's looking the other way. Uh, and once we've mirrored it, we can also uh, rotate it as well. So you can see that's uh, rotated as well. So the next parameter is the quality. Uh, and there are four qualities defined in the IIIF specification. And um, the first one is the default. Um, so this is what um, the kind of the best quality that you can provide. Um, so if it's a color image, um, default and color would be the same. Um, if it's a grayscale image, then uh, default and grayscale gray would be the same. Um, so the default is kind of the, the one that most people will access. Um, 
the other ones are gray, which is the grayscale version of the image. And if you have a color image, then the image server will convert it to grayscale. Uh, the same with bitonal. Um, and then uh, the color one, um, uh, if it's color image. And you kind of, there is a special file called the info.json, which is part of the image API. Um, and that, in that you can tell um, the server, the client, uh, which uh, colors are available. And you can see this, this example from um, Harvard. Uh, we've got uh, all of the quality, so default, bitonal, gray, and color. Um, if it was only a grayscale, grayscale image, then we'd only supply a default bitonal in this gray. And this info.json is used by the client. Uh, a client goes and gets the info.json and sees what the image server supports, and then it can uh, make the proper requests. Um, so if you can see in this example, we've got... Um, this image supports default gray, color, and bitonal. So we can swap it to gray, swap it to um, color, which will be the same as default, and we can swap it to bitonal. Um, the gray scale is particularly useful for um, OCR processes. So um, if this was a, um, a text, uh, lots of text on the page, you could convert it to gray scale before you do the OCR, and you'll usually get faster and better results, uh, and it'll save you a, a processing step. The last part of the image API is the format. Uh, and this is where you can specify um, if you want it in a JPEG or a PNG. Um, so just adding that on the end and tells you which uh, image type that you need to return. Uh, the British Library only does PNG and G JPEG. The JPEG is mandatory and then uh, the PNG is optional. Um, but if we were to look at the Harvard example, um, they offer PNG, TIFF, GIFs, and WebP. Um, what you support is kind of op to you and again uh, if you look, have a look at the info.json it will tell you um, what it supports. So that was a really quick run through through the uh, image API um, so you can have a look at this and, and play with them yourselves. Um, I did mention the image the info.json and just to give you a full example uh, there's an example here so when I talk about um, the image API being controlled you can see from here onwards, this is a IIIF image API, and before that is the identifier. If we were to add the info.json to that identifier, uh, then we get the special file which tells the client uh, exactly what this server supports. And if you were to open this up, you'd see things like the width, the maximum width of the image, the maximum height of the image, and then some tiling information, um, which we'll come on to later, which helps you uh, load the image quicker. And then the profile is about exactly what it supports. Um, so this example says that it's a compliance level two. Um, this one only supports JPEG. It doesn't support any of the other formats. And then special features, so it can support um, just specifying the height and the width uh, and can also force it into a box. Um, so these particular things are controlled in the image API. And you can see a full list at the image API specification. So there's a short question here, uh, kind of like a short challenge, and um, see if you can do this. So um, there's an example here from the Smithsonian. Um, you can see everything before the full is the identifier of the image, and then this is the image API. Um, and there's a question here is, how could we construct a URL that shows the full image? So it's not a region of the image, it's a full image. Um, that image is 512 pixels wide. It's flipped upside down. Um, it's available as gray scale and it has a format of PNG. Um, so just have a play around with this URL and see if you can get, um, to get it to fit all those different things. So I'm going to quickly talk now about um, file formats. Um, so the IIIF specification makes no mention of the source format of an image. Um, so you can use any type of image and it depends on which image server you choose. Uh, will depend on which uh, image server image you can support. So most of the image servers support common formats like JPEG, PNGs, TIFFs, or GIFs. Um, but to get the fastest experience, it's strongly advised to use a special kind of image format that supports tiling. Uh, examples of these include JPEG 2000, a special type of TIFF files called pyramid TIFFs. Um, and pyramid TIFFs are not the type of thing that comes off a scanner. Um, you tend to create your TIFF um, that you've got off your scanner and then you convert that to a pyramid TIFF. It's kind of a special type of um, TIFF. And the reason for this can be demonstrated in this diagram. So you imagine this uh, picture of the Mona Lisa, uh, and we've got the different levels of kind of zoom. Um, so when you're looking at this level, you're really looking at a thumbnail. 
Uh, and then as you zoom in, you get higher and higher detail of the image. And this is the final layer of detail. This is going to be kind of thought of as the highest quality of um, digitization. Um, but what you can see that each of these uh, images have been uh, stripped into little um, rectangle, uh, little squares. Uh, and these are called tiles. Um, so as you're zooming out, when you've zoomed out, you get the whole image, which is quite small. And then as you zoom in, you get a bigger image. And then when you get to this point here, um, you're looking at Mona Lisa's face uh, and you're only requesting these particularly tiles which are in the image. So all of the rest of the tiles are sitting on the image server and not being requested. You're only sending out the tiles um, that you're actually looking at. And again, the same with this one. Uh, and it's particularly important on the very big one. You save so much disk space and processing network traffic by only getting the um, tiles that you need. Uh, so this makes it a lot faster to um, navigate really big images in that you're only getting the data that you're actually looking at. You're not getting the rest of the image file. Um, so if you were to kind of do this without doing tiling, you'd download the full image. Um, and especially for a large high quality TIFF, that would take a long time. Whereas if you're using these tiling formats, you're only being sent the tiles that you're looking at. Um, there are various methods of creating JPEG 2000 and pyramids TIFFs. Um, for creating JPEG 2000, these are called um, recipes or ways to make JPEG 2000s. Uh, and just to give you an example, there's an, uh, a link here to the Bodleian's method for creating JPEG 2000s. Uh, and also for creating pyramid TIFFs, there's this example from the serverless tripliar. So once you have the image API, um, what can you do with it? Um, so the first thing is the image URL can be used as a normal image, as I showed you earlier. Um, so you can embed it on a web page, um, maybe as a blog post, maybe as a tweet. Um, you can just kind of um, email out or tweet out particular image links, which could be to a particular region of an image, or it could be the full image at a particular size. Um, you can use it for other things. So this was um, during the COVID lockdown where um, we had to do schoolwork. And one of the things was to write a menu. Uh, and so we're able to use the uh, image from the Smithsonian and embed it on the back of a PowerPoint and kind of right over the top of it. Um, so it's just a normal image once you've constructed the uh, image URL. Um, but the most common use case of using these images is to create these uh, zoomable viewers. Um, so this is a simple viewer called Open Sea Dragon. Um, and you can see that um, I can zoom around the image. And this in the background is going to get that info.json and to find out what's possible. And it's constructing those URLs that we've had a look at. Um, and it's bringing in all those different tiles um, seamlessly just as I'm zooming around. Um, so there is an example here from the National Museum of Sweden um, and they only support the image API. They don't support the presentation API. Uh, and you can see that this is example, you can uh, zoom around this image. Uh, and this is actually also using um, the um, Open Sea Dragon, but you can zoom around it. Um, what the IIIF image API doesn't give you is this context. Um, so this context of the metadata, um, this, is, this example is given by the um, page containing the Open Sea Dragon. Um, so it's just a simple image. Um, if you want to do um, multiple images, so if you've got a book with multiple pages, um, then you'd have to look at the presentation API, which we're going to cover tomorrow. Um, so the image API is just for a single image, and it doesn't contain any of the metadata or any of the structural information. Um, that's all in the presentation API. Um, but if you don't want to implement the presentation API, then you can embed the image API uh, in your website, but you're kind of you're responsible for um, adding the metadata to the page. It's not going to come from the IIIF API. Um, but yes, the image API is just basically the zooming uh, image. Uh, there's also this tool as well, which is um, for georeferencing maps. Um, so if you have a IIIF image, you can use that um, georeferencing tool um, to georeference it. So now we've looked at the um, theory of the image API, we're going to move on to um, how you implement it. Um, and the, I'm going to go through the British Library method, um, but also uh, link to some other methods, um, just in case uh, you're interested or you had images that you wanted to play with this week, um, which aren't in the um, British Library image server, you're welcome to use one of the other examples. Um, when we had, we did a survey um, back in 2018 to find out what people were using, 
Um, and it, it is slightly out of date now, but you can see um, a lot of people are using uh, AAAF image servers like IAP image server, uh, Loris, which was another popular one, although um, less popular now. Uh, Cantaloupe is, is definitely increasing in uh, popularity, which isn't listed in this, um, this survey. Um, but you can see there's a big range of um, different ways of accessing the AAAF uh, image API. Um, but as I mentioned, the British Library uh, uses its own image server that's been developed by the British Library. Um, it is available as open source and it's called um, Tremendous AAAF. Um, as far as I know, it's the only .NET um, AAAF image server available. Uh, and it looks like it supports the um, AAAF version 3 image API. Um, and as you can see from the uh, detailed look into the image API, it does support many of the advanced features of um, the AAAF image API. Um, so it does look a really good um, image server. Um, for the other options, um, so um, when we're doing this to uh, other people, we, we get people to have a look at um, where the images are kept already. Um, so if they've already got a vendor system, then maybe integrating AAAF into that would be the easiest way to um, implement AAAF. Um, there are also hosted options. So there are companies which um, will offer AAAF image hosting for you. Uh, and there's some, some examples here, that here. There's one, which is the Internet Archive, which does give you free access to images. And there's a, a full guide as part of this workshop, um, which you can put your images on the Internet Archive if you want to have a play around with some AAAF images. Um, but there are also some commercial ones which you can pay for a larger scale. Uh, the other option then is to install your own image server. Um, so we do have a guide for Cantaloupe, uh, which is one of the more popular ones written in Java. Um, you can think of um, tremendous AAAF as, as equivalent to Cantaloupe, um, just written in a different language. So Cantaloupe is in Java uh, and tremendous AAAF is in, um, in .NET. Uh, but there are other uh, image servers available. Um, the final option is to use um, something called static tiles. Um, so when we were looking at um, the image API and we're looking at um, how we have those different levels and all those different levels are cut into tiles. Um, so there is a way to pre-generate all those tiles and just store them on the image, image on a web server somewhere um, and kind of pre-predict what people are going to ask. Um, so there's an example here where um, this looks like a, a AAAF um, image URL, and it, it is. Um, but if you go to the server, you'll actually see the files on the file system. So we haven't got JPEG 2000 um, sitting behind this. All of it's already been pre-cut up uh, into the, all the tiles that required it to create a zoomable viewer. Um, the downs, and you can see this is like a fully zoomable version, uh, and this is all using static, um, static tiles. The downside to this is that you can't ask for custom regions. Um, so when we we're uh, kind of using that cutout um, tool to kind of pick particular regions, um, you can't do that with this because the, the regions have been pre-generated uh, and they've been pre-generated aiming for this kind of zoomable viewer. Um, so you can't create thumbnails of particular regions. You can do thumbnails of the whole um, thing, um, but you can't do a particular th region of this, say, um, this car. Um, but it does work with annotations, it does work with Mirador and Universal Viewer. And there are a couple of issues, but it is definitely an option if you're looking for a, a low cost, cheap way of um, providing uh, AAAF images API uh, without using an image server. Um, and because it's relatively simple, um, it's very scalable. Um, so there are definitely um, reasons for doing this. And we also have a, a, a guide to do this on the uh, workbench um, for the part of this workshop. And this one's particularly useful if you're working for an institution which doesn't have a AAAF image server. So if you're an independent um, researcher and you want a place to put your AAAF images, um, we have a GitHub uh, workbench um, type of method of uploading your images to this workbench uh, and it'll make them publicly available uh, using the level zero image API. But for the purposes of this workshop, um, we're going to use the um, British Library um, AAAF image server. Um, so what we're going to do here is going to try and find the AAAF image URL. Uh, and if you make note of them today, because we'll use them tomorrow when we um, work on the presentation API. Um, so first of all, we've got to find a um, British Library digital item. And if you have a look at the um, British Library AAAF collection guide, 
uh, and follow those links, uh, you should be able to find a IIIF item. And when you do, it should be open up in the universal viewer like this. Uh, and I've got an example, which is um, here. So I've gone to Primo, I've um, found this particular manifest. I'm gonna click on the go uh, and it's gonna open up the universal viewer. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger so all the things are there. And then if I go to the share, um, what it's going to do is it's going to give me this IIIF logo. And if I click that, uh, this will take me to the IIIF manifest, which we'll cover tomorrow, which is part of the presentation API. Um, but this manifest contains links to all of the images which make up this particular manuscript. Um, so if I take a copy of this manifest, um, you can see here there's a kind of a question mark and we don't need anything on the right hand side of the question mark. So I'm copying everything to that um, question mark. If you go back here, there's just there is details on here about how to do it. So it tells you to find the uh, manifest, open it in the Universal Viewer, uh, click on the share, and then click on the IIIF icon, uh, and that will or right click and copy link address, uh, and this will create the URL here. And basically, I want everything to the left of this um, this um, question mark, which the Universal Viewer puts in. And so I should end up with something like this. So now I've copied my um, IIIF manifest URL. Uh, we want to be able to get the image URLs from this. Um, you could look at the JSON and pick out the image URL and we can go through that tomorrow. Um, but for now, because we haven't covered the presentation API, I've created this tool uh, which will allow us to do it. Um, so if I paste my manifest in here and I click load, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to pick out all the different images um, from the manuscript uh, and give me a copy um, button. And once I've done this, I've copied my image URL. Uh, it's also got a filter. So if I was looking for page 33, uh, you can put it in here and it will bring back everything with 33 in the page level. Um, so I'll use this example and I'll copy it and then I'll just uh, clear it to get rid of it, uh, get it out of the way. Um, so now we've got a, a a link to our IIIF image URL, and I'll just paste it in a new tab here. So you can see this is um, basically the identifier part of the image. Um, so if I was to put slash info.json on the end of it, uh, I would get back to my info.json um, for this particular image. And if I was to change this URL to go full, which is the um, uh, region, um, next is the size, and go for 512. Um, rotation is next and go for zero rotation, then quality and go for default, and then I'm going to ask for a JPEG. And if I do this, it should um, give me the image to download, um, which is good. Okay, so I've got my uh, image URL. Uh, I can now try and uh, use it in a couple of um, IIIF tools. Uh, so the first one that we're going to look at is this Open Sea Dragon. And this is just to double check that we can zoom into the image uh, and it's all working correctly. So I'm going to open this into a new tab. Um, you can see that this particular is, this is an example of an image URL, but it requires the slash info.json. Um, so now I've opened up this up, I'm going to change the URL and I'm going to paste the one that I've copied. And I'm just going to put slash info.json on the end. And now this is the image that I've uh, copied. So um, page 33. And I should be able to zoom in and zoom around this image. And in the background, it'd be asking for all those different um, tiles that make up the image. So now that's worked. Uh, another tool you can use is this um, great tool from the University College Dublin. Uh, and this allows you to kind of pick out the regions. Um, so if I open up this in a new tab, so this particular one also takes uh, an image ID at the end, um, but this one doesn't require the slash info.json. So I'm just going to copy that straight there and refresh, and we should see the image loaded here. Uh, and the way this works is once you passed an image into it, uh, it opens it up and it gives you this box, which you can drag around uh, to cut out a region. So I'm going to cut out this particular region here. And then right at the bottom, uh, it gives us an image URL. And again, we can copy this now and open it in a new window. Uh, and it will give us the image uh, to download um, if we wanted to.
Uh, you can also pick things. So at the moment, uh, I just picked out a region, um, but it does let you to allow you to choose to a particular size of the image. Uh, also, you can rotate it if you wanted to, uh, and then you can select the different um, types of if it default color or bitonal or grayscale. So I've done that with my image. Uh, I proved that I've worked. It works. Um, if you do a couple of images, um, that'd be helpful for the thing tomorrow. And if you just make note of the uh, image API, so this bit here. Oh. So this bit here, if you just make note of this image API, uh, I'm going to be able to uh, use that tomorrow. Also have a play around and see if you can add things to the URL to get to different uh, regions of the images and different sizes, um, just so you're comfortable uh, with the image API. So that's the main task uh, for tomorrow. Uh, there are these three optional um, tasks, which I mentioned, um, that you're welcome to have a go at. Um, the next one, the Internet Archive one, is really useful if you've got your own images um, that maybe aren't available as the, in the um, British Library IIIF image server, uh, and you wanted to use your own images. This takes you through the Internet Archive, uh, which does give you access, free access to IIIF images. And there's also a way to kind of highlight them as, um, as temporary. Yeah, so when you upload it, you can put it as a test item and then it'll be deleted after 30 days. Um, so if you did want to use your own images, um, then this is a really good way of doing it. Um, this is a fully functional um, image server. I think it's a level one image server, so it's not quite as, it doesn't support quite as much stuff as a British Library one. Um, it's, a, it's not the most efficient image server, so it's quite slow, but it does give you access to a full uh, IIIF image server for free. Uh, the next option is using a, a tool that we've developed as part of the training called Workbench. Uh, and I mentioned that this uh, uses GitHub in the back end and the background to support, to provide access to your IIIF images. So you upload your image in any format, JPEGs, PNG, uh, and then in the background, it will cut them into tiles and then send them to GitHub um, and create this level zero image server. Um, so you're welcome to have a look at this one. And then finally, um, this is kind of more advanced one is just setting up Cantaloupe. Um, so this might not be so relevant for the British Library because you do have your own image server. Um, but if you want to see what was involved and just have a play around, uh, then there's some instructions here about um, setting up Cantaloupe. So I think I've covered everything here. We've had a look. Um, we have a look at the image API. Uh, we've had a look at how we can uh, adapt the image API URL to get different parts of images. Uh, I've explained the difference between level zero and level one of images. Uh, and now hopefully you know some of the tools that work with the image API. Um, so if you can have a go at the exercises, um, we're going to meet um, on Tuesday um, to go through any questions you have. So I'll send out an agenda to the meeting. And if you come across any questions um, during the uh, going through this or trying it out yourself, I just put it into this agenda and we'll uh, go through it as a group uh, tomorrow and discuss any issues. Uh, if you have any, uh, get into any real issues, um, I'm going to be available on Slack. Um, so do feel free to reach out uh, and I look forward to speaking to you. So thank you. <laughs>